It's a great day because we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Shall we all stand up and sing unto him, worship him, adore him because he deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him rule. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men the songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the song in joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow. No thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness, and wonders of His love, and wonders of His love. Wonders, wonders of His love He rules the world with truth and grace And makes the nations prove The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love and wondrous of his love and wondrous wondrous of his love amen we are here this morning to celebrate his birth and his love for us and as we remain we just sing unto him just worship him because we can only bring offering of praise for him because this is all we have so we just thank him for what he has done in our lives and sing unto him. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. No only shepherds. Three wise men seeking truth. They try. Hoping to find the child from heaven And falling on their knees They bow before the humble Prince of Peace Offering a worship to my King no one on earth deserves the praises that I see. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you do. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No more than man would dare to stand before your throne. 
It's only by your blood, and it's only through your mercy, Lord, I come. Bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I see. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you do. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. I'll bring an offering. I'll bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I see. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you do. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. Yes, Jesus. Oh Lord, I bring an offering. Jesus, Lord, we want to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to the earth. Lord, for this, Lord, so that, Lord, we can have life, life abundantly, Father. We want to bless your name. Lord, we want to praise you because of your love. We want to worship you because of your sacrifice. We want to praise your name because you are worthy. You are holy. You are the excellent one. You are the anointed one. You are the Holy One. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We worship your name. We bless your name. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Father. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him.
us who know him this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus, we worship you. attitude of worship Jesus the object of our worship the newborn prince is here right in our midst and there is a couple here that you are carrying an immense burden and you are here today not just to celebrate Christmas not just because you have come to celebrate a traditional service you are here crying out to the Lord saying I need a miracle. We need a miracle. As a couple, you need a miracle in your life. My brother and sister, whoever you are, the babe of Bethlehem is very real. He's here this morning. He is no longer a baby. He's the king of kings. He's the answer to your prayer. And he's the answer to the burden that you are carrying, whoever you may be. Your miracle is at the doorstep all you have to do is trust the lord until any this morning the lord says to you that he has labored with you the holy spirit says that he has labored with you and he is still laboring with you and the lord says to surrender your life completely to him and you will begin to see the things of your heart's desire taking place he says, do not fight me, but surrender to me. Have I not been good to you? Have I not shown you the goodness of my mercy, says the Lord? And the Lord says, I will always be your God if you would give me the first place in your life. Let's sing that chorus one more time. And as we do, whoever you are, the babe of Bethlehem is very real today. He's here. He's personally your God your personal God my personal God is here to meet your need as we sing raise your hands and worship the Lord and then the Spirit of the Lord minister to you and deliver you of whatever your problem is It is the tradition of the Assemblies of God every Christmas to take a very, very special loved offering. An offering of love for the service of our pastor. And we have had Pastor Naresh and Sister Anu and the family serve us with great love and great dedication this past year. 
Actually, they've been here for a little over almost three years, isn't it? Two years. Two years. And they have poured their hearts into ministering to the people of this congregation, not just the English, the Sinhala, and the Tamil. And we as a congregation have been blessed for their ministry, their love, and their compassion. Uh, along with their children, I know what it is to be in a pastor's home, to grow up in a pastor's home. I know what it is to be a pastor and have children and, and to make the sacrifices for those children. And I appreciate Anaya and Avishan for the commitment, the dedication and the sacrifice that the two of you make uh, on behalf of the church and the kingdom of God. This morning's offering is going to be a very special offering in that it's going to be given to our pastor, our senior pastor, our associate senior pastor, and his family. In saying thank you, it's a very small thank you for all the love they have poured out for us as a church. But before we do that, we're going to stand as a family and we are going to pray for our senior uh, associate senior pastor, his wife, and uh, Avishan and Anaya. So may I invite the congregation to please stand. Extend your hand towards our pastor and his family. I'm going to ask pastor and sister to come and stand in front along with Avishan and Anaya. If the two of you would come as well. Congregation, would you extend your hand towards our pastor and his wife? And we're going to pray and thank the Lord for the couple and we are going to pray for a special anointing upon them. We're going to ask the Lord to minister to them throughout the next coming week, in the days, and that the Lord would prepare them for what he has in store for them in the coming year. At the same time, we will pray for the offering that we are about to receive, which is for them. Our Heavenly Father, this morning, we thank you for our pastor and his wife, Pastor Naresh and Sister Anusha. We thank you, Lord, for Avishan and Anaya. We thank you for this blessed family that you have gifted to us. Lord, a couple who's, who was willing to leave the comfort of Colombo and come to Kandy to choose to take on the responsibility of this church. We thank you, Lord, for their burden, for their vision. We thank you, Lord, for the vision they have cast to the congregation, to the leadership. We thank you, Lord, for, the, for their standing in, in, amidst our congregation. We thank you, Lord, that you have raised them up to a place of love, a place of honor, and a place where they carry responsibility. And thank you, Lord, for their home as an example to us all. We thank you for this. Father, this morning, we as a congregation pray very specially for pastor, his wife, the two children. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to lead, guide, and bless them. And Father, continue to anoint them. We pray for their needs, their physical needs, their spiritual needs, their financial needs, their emotional needs. We thank you, Lord, that you are going to meet all of these needs because you are a God of miracles. We commit our pastor and his family into your loving hands. Father, we know that they have family visiting with us today. We pray your hand of blessing upon each of them. We pray, Lord, for all of them today. And bless them too, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, now we pray, pray and ask your blessing upon the offering that we are about to receive for our pastor and his family. We ask your blessing upon it and bless everyone who gives today. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God, Candy, uh, Christmas service. Good to see uh, all the faces and some familiar, some not, some new. But all of you, you are welcome this morning to be with us. And uh, want to wish you a Merry Christmas, uh, even before I begin my sermon this morning. Uh, just want to thank the Lord for the year. Thank you. Uh, just want to thank uh, for the pastoral team who has stood with us throughout this year uh, to go the journey. It's not, a, not an easy journey. It has been a difficult year. You know that personally, as a family, 
and as a church it has been a difficult year for all of us but I'm, I'm so amazed to see a team that is rallying around and standing with us so good to see you uh, standing with us to go on this journey and uh, uh, just want to thank the Lord for everything and you know even sometimes uh, we wonder we should do or not some things because uh, everything is is like new we are trying a lot of new things and even last week I remember that uh, you know, when we decided to uh, give a lunch for the congregation, uh, it wasn't an easy decision. But pastoral team, they came together and said, Pastor, we are going to stand with you. We are going to give the money for this. And they stood with me. They, they really actually carried the burden. And they said, we are going to cook. Don't hire the you know, cooks. We will come and cook. And they came and they cooked and they did everything. They put their money. And I'm so thankful to God for a team like that. You know, that, that gives you so much, uh, you know, strength to move forward in the journey. Uh, so just want to thank all of you for trusting us and uh, being with us throughout this year and uh, going on the journey that God has called us. You know, if you remember last week, I was talking about the meaning of Christmas. Because, you know, what happens during the season time, it's, it's very easy for us to get carried away with all the celebration. And totally forget about the reason for the season, right? Christmas season can be a very busy time for all of us. Since it comes at the end of the year, we can get totally busy with so many things that needs to be get done before the end of the year. And we want to get our house painted, uh, decorating the house. Now, these are some things that happened in my house, okay? So I'm telling you, okay? Uh, buying clothes for the family, reunion with family, lots of meal times with the family and friends, baking cakes and cookies. You know, different cultures in different homes. But we are busy with so many things that we want to do during this time, right? Preparing the children for next school term, buying books, buying their needs, and all these activities just gets you, you know, into a motion of Christmas. But you're just walking through. Sometimes you wonder, how did we come to 25th of December? What happened to 25 days? How did it go? Any one of you who are thinking like that? Sorry? I don't need to agree. Go on. Yeah. yeah, you might be wondering that. So, um, I, I, I think the key thing is that in spite of all that, you know, we have made it to the Christmas. And, and my, my point this morning is that we, do, we take very little time to ponder the meaning of Christmas. In fact, even as pastors, we get so busy sometimes, it eats into our spiritual life these 25 days. We, we, we spend very less time in meditating God's word and praying because you are like almost every time you have been called into one after the other, right? So I can imagine about you, right? So uh, this morning, what we're going to do is, we have about 20 minutes, we're going to just take two thoughts and we're going to just meditate on the meaning of Christmas, right? For a Christmas message, you can go to texts with events of Christmas. Angels, wise men, shepherds, manger, the stars, etc. And that's what we do normally, right? But the text we are going to look at today is not describing the elements of Christmas. It tells us what they mean, right? It doesn't tell us what happened, but it tells us the meaning of what happened, okay? You remember that last week we looked at John chapter 1, 1 to 14. John wrote the gospel and John also wrote three other letters. We call John, uh, 1 John, 2 John and 3 John. Uh, John. So we're going to look at one of those letters, John chapter 1, four verses. That's all we're going to look at. That's why I said I don't need a reader because just four verses. I'll read for you. Right? John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. This is what it says. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy 
complete. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we this morning, we thank you. We thank you, Father Lord, for John's witness. He's talking about something very personal in this passage. And Holy Spirit of God, you are the one who gave him these words. This morning, after 2,000 years, as we sit and ponder these words, the same Holy Spirit who gave the words to John, let it come upon us and Lord, prepare our hearts and enlighten our hearts with these words so that we also will understand the real meaning of Christmas. To this extent, we commit our time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, that's a very weak amen. And everyone said, amen. amen. From this passage we are going to look at, I've written here four things, but we don't have time. Two things that it teaches about Christmas. Okay? The birth of Christ. What it means, of, uh, means for the Lord of heaven to come into this world. What it means for the Son of God to be born into a human being. Two things I'm going to talk about. Two things. 1 John 1, 1 to 4. First thing is, the Christmas means salvation is by grace alone. And some of you are saying, interpret that. I'll do that. Salvation is by grace alone. What I mean by salvation is, we get saved from our sins. Okay? We have sinned and our, we, we have to pay a penalty for our sin. We get saved from our sin by grace. Grace is what? Grace means that someone actually gives you a gift that you don't deserve. So you're saving or you get saved from your sins from someone who is going to give you a gift that you don't deserve. That's what it means. Do you notice how John talks about Jesus here? In John chapter 1, he calls G Jesus uh, as, as the Word. You remember that? In the beginning was the Word. And Word was with God. And Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwell among us. You remember that? That's what he says in John chapter 1. But John chapter, sorry, 1 John 1 verse 1 and 2. Carefully look at it. Look at what he says about Jesus. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at our, uh, looked and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Now he calls him the word of life. And when you go to the verse 2, he said, the life appeared. The second time he's calling Jesus, the life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life. Third time, is calling Jesus the eternal life. Now John, you know, with, with careful words, three times in, the, in these two verses, calls Jesus the life. The life. Is the word of life? Is the life appeared? Is the eternal life? Right? Now the question we have is, what does he mean by this life, right? The biggest difference that Jesus brings into Christmas time is that he says, basically, I am the life. You remember John, John chapter 14, he says, I am the life, I am the truth, I am the way. So he says, I am the life, right? What he means by life? This is not just the life on earth for 70 to 80 years that we can think of. But this is the eternal life that all of us who are born into this world, we, lie, we live forever. And he's talking about this eternal life and he's saying, I am this eternal life. Right. He didn't point out to a way like any other religious leader saying, that's how you get to eternal life. That's how you get to God. But he says, I am the life. I am the life. Christmas does not say Jesus is a great prophet come to the world to point the way to God and how we can save ourselves. According to Christmas, Jesus Christ is God and he came to the world to save us from our sin, to do for us what we cannot do and that is to give eternal life. So to know Jesus Christ is to have eternal life. Can I say that again? So to know Jesus Christ is to have eternal life. Jesus Christ did not come to give us a formula of how to get eternal life. Oh, he didn't even say, uh, he didn't say, you follow these 
teaching and you will get you will get saved he didn't say if you do this and do that you will be saved from your sins he didn't even say if you obey my teaching you will be saved he didn't say if you only follow me you will get saved he says i am the eternal life in other words what he's saying is if you believe in me if you believe in me you will have eternal life that's what he's saying i've heard people saying every religion is saying have a, how many of you have heard that phrase every religion basically says to do good things have you heard that before even a couple of days ago someone came to my room and said the same thing i disagree with that statement every religion is not saying you know why in every other religion it says you do good works to earn your merits to eternal life you do good works so that you can have eternal life by your works and it all it all depends on how much good work you can do to get this life eternal life but jesus says your good deeds are like filthy rags in front of me so what is he saying your good deeds cannot earn anything in fact in 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 spite you know you cannot live a good life no matter how good you are outside even inside the reason that you are good is for a selfish purpose and you and i cannot be living a good life so jesus said on behalf of you i came to this world and lived the life that you should live 33 years i lived total obedient life a, a holy life a life that is completely set apart for god and i did that for you he lived the life i should live and he died the death i should have died church that's what christmas is all about we have nothing to do we cannot do anything to get this eternal life because jesus has done it he lived for us and he died for us so that you and i today by believing in this jesus we can have eternal life so now if someone said every religion is same you can stop them and say i'm sorry it's not the case because every other religion tells you to do good works to earn merits to have your eternal life but jesus says i am the life and you don't have to do any good deeds because you can't do good deeds there is nothing good in you and all you got to do is to believe that i have done the good things that you're supposed to live i am so i live the life that you're supposed to live i died the death that you're supposed to die and trust believe in me so that you can have life then why do christian do good works you can ask that question as a church we do a lot of good works we do good works not to earn merits we do good works not to earn god's approval we don't we do good works not to earn you know god's love we do good works out of gratitude for how to what god has done in our life we are so grateful that we are saved we are completely set up set free from our sinful lives and god has done this amazing thing he has given this amazing gift in response to that in gratitude we do good works can you see the difference why we do what we do we don't do to earn anything we do it because you know he has already done it for us we do it out of gratitude You see what John says here is we saw him with our own eyes we heard him with our own ears we touched him with our own hands is is what is he trying to tell us why so emphatic here John basically saying is that he is not telling us just a he is basically trying to tell us he's not trying to tell a nice story it really really happened we really really saw jesus jesus really lived jesus really died jesus really rose from dead jesus is really god who came down to earth he is not just a wonderful teacher he is god himself if christmas is just a story of another legend you are on your own but if christmas is about god coming to earth like john says that is true then we have hope this is the eyewitness this is the first hand testimony john this is the reason that we can be completely saved from our sin and by grace uh, you know we, by believing in jesus in jesus you re- you are received and accepted so first of all christmas means salvation that means we get saved 
by grace alone. It's a gift from God. We can't earn it. Right? The second point is Christmas means you can have fellowship with a living God. Christmas means you can have a fellowship with a living God. Why John points to the fact that God became human? You remember in John chapter 1? The word became flesh and lived among us, he says. We call this incarnation. What do you mean by incarnation? God taking the form of a human being. He, 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 he takes the flesh and he comes down and lives with us. Verse 3, this is what he says in, in 1 John 1 verse 3 says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship with the Father and with His Son and Jesus Christ. John is basically inviting us to have the same fellowship that he had with Jesus and the Father. He's inviting us into that fellowship. There's the same fellowship. He said, I've seen Him. I've heard Him. I've touched him and he's inviting us into that kind of a fellowship so that you and I also can come in and we can hear him, we can see him, we can touch him. In other words, the meaning of Christmas is fellowship with God. We've been told here is that it is not enough to just believe and obey God, but he's calling beyond that to have a fellowship with him. Christmas means God has gone in finite length to come near to you. Can I say that again? Christmas means God has gone in finite length to come near to you. So that you and I can have a personal relationship with Him. So we can know Him personally. God is not simply a concept to be known. God is not simply content to be, a, to be known as a concept. Or to be believed or even something to warm your heart. He's not even content to be a powerful force that you bow. And that's why he became a human. One of the reasons he became human is so that we can have a relationship with him. We can relate to him. I want to ask a question. Can you look at the SU and sun with your naked eye? Can you do that? No, you can't. If you, if, you, if you stare at the sun long enough, it can even burn your retina. You need a filter. I don't know whether you remember, as a kids, we remember taking a glass and take a candle and then the smoke, allow the smoke to fill the glass and then we take it and we look, this, look, at, look, look at the sun through the glass. It's a filter, right? In the same way, we cannot see God directly because we cannot see him uh, in his glory. He became a human being. You know, Ark the Herald Angels Sing, that song was written by Charles Wesley, amazing theologian, John Wesley's brother. In, in, in the second verse, he says this, Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. This is what I want you to get it. Veiled in the flesh, the Godhead see, hell in incarnate deity. He was veiled in the flesh, a Godhead that we can see now, right? And hailed in incarnation, a deity became incarnated. And that's what Christmas is all about. Because God became human flesh. We can see his glory in the way, otherwise it will overwhelm us. Do you remember Moses when he wants to see God? What did God say? You, you will die if you see me. In the Old Testament, do you remember that? But in John 1, John says, God became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. We saw him with our bare eyes. We touched him with our hands. We heard him. How come in the Old Testament this God is impossible even to see but in the new testament john is saying basically we saw him we touched him we heard him how did this happen god put a filter by becoming a human so that now you and i can see him do you understand what christmas means is taking that form of a human being so that you and i 
can relate to him in human terms. So, when you read the gospel, you saw, you basically begin to see God in human form. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. When you read about Jesus, you're reading about God who has become human. It is like a filter now. You'll be able to understand. You can see him. You can see his love. You can see his humility. You can see his brilliance. You can see his wisdom. You can see his compassion. All attributes of God that is mentioned in the Old Testament. Now you see in a person called Jesus Christ. And we can see them. You know, we can come near to him. We can now, you know, uh, uh, we can now intellectually understand who this God is. We, we, he becomes graspable. He becomes someone whom we can relate to now. When you read the gospel, God becomes human. He is a human. He becomes a person means he is a person now. The practice point, uh, the practical point of this is that Christmas God went to infinite length to come near to us, to come close to us, so that we can know him personally. God went to an infinite length to come near to us. He lost his glory in the heaven. He lost all the praises and adoration. He was the king of kings. He got off from his throne and lost everything. And even allowed him to become a human, not just a human, even to die a death, a cruel death on the cross. He lost everything. He lost his life so that now you and I you know, can come near to him. So if this is what God has done, if this is what Jesus has done, you now you and I must be willing to go to a great length to get close to him. You know, a great uh, priest called Daniel Steele, from England, he wrote about his prayer life, and this is what he said, you know, almost every week, or sometimes every day, all my being is filled with God when I wait upon his presence. And I experience him. And, and are you, am I willing to go to that extent to get to know him, what it takes to get close to him. What will it take in your life to get close to him? Christmas is a challenge because he has done so much for us. How much are we doing to get to know him? Do you know that until Christmas, heaven and earth was completely separated and had no connection? Heaven, heaven basically had eternity, love, peace, joy, immorality. But on earth was suffering, death and mourning. As we heard even today, people are suffering that some of the people couldn't come to church because of water and the suffering and struggling is continuing. And that's what on earth what we see. And heaven, we have all these good things. But in between there is this huge concrete slab that separates heaven and earth. And we cannot even access to all the good things in heaven because of our sinfulness. But on the Christmas, God punched a hole in the concrete so that heaven can invade earth. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is heaven invading the earth, finally. And all the good things in the heaven has come down to earth and it's made available for you and me. That's what Christmas is all about. Let's pray. We will take a moment to just ponder the meaning of Christmas. Christmas is salvation is by grace alone. Christmas means that we can have fellowship with the living God. Father, this afternoon, we want to thank you for Christmas. Because it's not just a holiday, it's not just a 
family reunion. It's not just a good time to have food together. It's more than that. And as we heard from your word this morning, from John himself who wrote the first John, that he has seen, he has heard, he has touched you. What amazing truth, Lord. The God of heaven who created the heaven and the earth came down to earth. The form of a human being lived among us so that we can get to know you personally. And today, you have made it possible for us to grasp a God who is infinite. And you have allowed us to understand and have a relationship with you because you have forgiven our sins through your Son, Jesus Christ, and given us hope that will never fade no matter what we go through. And Lord, as John finishes this verse, there's so much joy in our hearts thinking what you have done for us. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and have a wonderful holiday season.